Hey, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video because we have a wild housing market to say the least. So for example, the share of price drops is at least a five-year high for early June, and there's over 30% more houses for sale compared to one year ago. In addition, houses are taking longer to sell compared to 12 months ago, yet the number of people who are deciding to list their house for sale has actually been losing momentum. Some very big changes happening right now in our US housing market. This is actually my favorite video I make each and every week um, for you guys. This is based on my own analysis of Realtor.com's latest data, uh, just posted today, which is on June 13th. So I have a lot to share in today's video. If you guys are new here, I post frequent housing market updates so you guys can be more informed about whether you should be buying or selling a house right now. And with that said, Let's be in today's video and I appreciate you. So I'll leave a link uh, in the video description below regarding this article from uh, Realtor.com just posted on June 13th. And just like my previous videos, I did not even read it. If you guys do read it, by the way, uh, leave me a comment below with your thoughts regarding does my analysis agree to theirs. Also go to um, Realtor.com slash research slash data, click on weekly inventory numbers, and their data goes back through, I think it's July of 2017. Click on that link right there and it takes you to this information. So we're gonna talk about the year of year change of asking prices, um, active listings or housing inventory, new listings, days in the market, and also price drops as well. And I'll share a summary at the very uh, end of this video as well. So for the week ended June 8th, the most recent uh, stats we have from realtor.com, asking prices were flat year over year. In fact, they've actually been flat ever since February of this year due to rising inventory and 7% mortgage rates. This, of course, is all contributing to the slowdown in asking prices on national level. And the reason why this is important is that stagnant growth of asking prices leads close home sales in the coming months. So in an environment in which we have, you know, asking prices relatively flat from one year ago, we shouldn't see a giant surge of asking or close home prices in the coming months. However, if asking prices were surging, let's just say they were increasing by double digits, then one would make the uh, reasonable conclusion that we're going to see ask or home sold prices will also increase as well. But right now it's been relatively flat ever since really February of this year. Now, speaking of inventory levels, let's take a look at that. So inventory on a national level surged by 36.0%, a small increase compared to the previous week up by 35.5%. So besides two weeks ago, when inventory increased by 36.5%, that's the largest year of year increase since April of 2023. There's been more houses for sale compared to the same time frame one year ago for the past 31 consecutive weeks. Uh, dating back to November last year. This, of course, is good news for home buyers. You want to see more houses for sale. Uh, you don't want to see you know, inventory absolutely you know, falling off a cliff and um, causing um, bidding wars and prices to absolutely surge as well. Uh, so it's good news to see inventory up by 36%. However, though, inventory is not skyrocketing uh, because we're not seeing uh, new listings absolutely skyrocketing as well. In fact, new listings have only been increasing by single digits, which is much different compared to the start this year. Also, inventory has been increasing um, due to two main reasons, from more new listings compared to 12 months ago, and also a low level of closed home sales. If you guys follow the channel, you guys all know I like to share multiple sources on uh, this uh, channel. So let's have a look at inventory according to outsourcesresearch.com. So uh, one year ago, we had approximately 444,000 existing houses for sale. Now we have approximately 612,000. So we have approximately 167,000 or just under uh, 168,000 more houses for sale as an increase of 38% year over year, uh, which actually uh, this video I made one week ago, we also saw a gain of 38%. So the growth rate is moving more or less in line with last year's levels. Now, here's something I love to share on the channel. Uh, there's approximately 113,000 more house of sale right now compared to the start this year. So year to date so far, 
uh, inventory has increased by 23%. Compare that to the same time frame last year, inventory decreased by 6%. So last year, decreasing by 6%, whereas this year, we're up by 23% looking at the same timeframes. Also, housing supply is rising faster this year compared to the average pre-pandemic uh, era. It's up by about 18% from January through May this year, based on data from Realtor.com, which is much higher compared to the gain of only 9% on average in 2017, 18, and 19, uh, during the same time frame, which is January through May. So to summarize, inventory is not only up by over 30% year over year, it's also rising much faster compared to pre-pandemic era or pre-COVID levels, up by 18% um, so far this year, compared to the average uh, 2017 through 2019, uh, a small gain of 9%. Will that change though, given the uh, small rise of new listings, which I'll share with you guys here in a little bit, or will home sales drop causing inventory to rise further? That's exactly what happened in 2022. We didn't see a sharp rise of new listings, but we did see a sharp pullback in home buying demand. And so because of that uh, sharp pullback in home buying demand, that was one of the main reasons why inventory absolutely skyrocketed in the um, last half of 2022 and the spring home buying season as well. Let's also talk about uh, new listings because last week it only increased by 8% which is a big change compared to last week, a gain of 2.1%. But we're still in single digits for about one month. So excluding the Easter holiday week, new listings have been on the uh, rise though, compared to the same time frame 12 months ago for the past 33 weeks. But the big change though is the growth rate of new listings has lost momentum and has only been up by single digits for the past six weeks. In contrast, we saw double-digit gains of new listings for much of February and March this year. This is slowing down the growth rate of housing inventory, which would put less downward pressure on home prices. In contrast, let's imagine a scenario in which new listings were surging by, let's just say, 30%. So if we had a long period of time, let's say uh, you know, a couple months or so, in which new listings were absolutely skyrocketing, that would cause housing inventory to also skyrocket as well, which of course will put big downward pressure on home prices. Right now, it's a good sign to see that we have, what, 36% more houses for sale, but new listings only increased by 8% last week. If that was increasing by 30 plus percent, inventory levels would be um, skyrocketing, which of course would be a recipe for disaster for a housing market. But if you guys wanna see home prices decrease, uh, you guys would probably rejoice, right? So in any case, stay tuned on that because we'll have to see this trend continues in which we see um, kind of stagnant growth of new listings or will new listings start surging again? Um, but on top of that, will um, home buyers really put the brakes on buying houses given the fact we have record high home prices and of course we have um, you know elevated rates as well. So stay tuned, I'll, I'll definitely keep posted regarding that. Um, also, let's change gears here and talk about how fast or how slow houses are selling. So last week, it took two days longer to sell a house compared to 12 months ago. This actually is a fairly new trend for about one month now. Houses on average are selling longer uh, compared to uh, 12 months ago, which is this time frame right there. A, a positive sign means that houses are taking longer to sell a negative sign means that houses are selling faster. I mention this because this is much different compared to uh, October last year through March this year, where houses on average were selling faster compared to the previous period. Let's watch this closely in the months ahead because of course a lot could change as well. All right, let's also talk about the increase of the number of price drops because that increased by 52.1% uh, year over year. The number of price reductions has been higher from last year, also for the past 20 consecutive weeks. This is likely from a rise of housing supply, uh, record high home prices based on the median sold price, and 7% mortgage rates. Now, speaking of price drops, take a look at this. This is on AltosResearch.com's website. The share price drops at uh, you know, just under 36%. This is at least a five-year high. Look at last year, 31% uh, compared to 36% now. Uh, 22 at only 25%, 2019 at 
2021, only 17.6%. Um, 2020 at 24%. And looking at pre-COVID levels, it was at only 32%. So the share price drops is at least a five-year high during the same time frame. In regards to house inventory, according to Altos, uh, we're at a three-year high uh, because we're higher than last year, 22 and 21, but still lagging behind 2020 and 2019. 2019, 953,000 houses for sale. Now we only have about 612,000. All right, that was a, a lot of info to cover in today's video. So here's a summary for you guys. And also I'll talk about um, uh, things that happened this week regarding our housing market and what this all means. Number one, the growth rate of asking prices on a national level have stalled out ever since February. This is likely due to a significant rise of inventory and elevated mortgage rates. Again, this is a future look at prices of close home sales in the coming months. Number two, housing inventory increased by 36% last week, one of the biggest year over year increases since April of 2023. This is from a low level of home sales and new listings higher compared to the previous year since November last year. However, there's still about 36% fewer houses for sale right now compared to the same time frame in 2019. Now, here's something I added in today's video. Real estate is local and also it's regional. It varies by the state, the region, but also, of course, the metro area and the neighborhood as well. So I mentioned that because as of May this year, uh, the state of Texas as a whole has more houses for sale compared to the same time frame in May of 2019. The only state, according to data from Realtor.com, that has more houses for sale compared to pre-COVID levels, and that's up by 2%. Um, but Florida, Arizona, and Idaho are not too far off behind. Florida is only down by 5%. This is May 2019 compared to May this year based on data from Realtor.com. So Florida is only uh, down by 5%. Arizona, very, very close, down by 2%. In Idaho is down by 1%. And here's where I found that information from. This is actually pulling data from Realtor.com, but it's on resiclubanalytics.com, a fantastic website if you guys want to learn about you know, trends in the housing market. And they put it really um, together really nicely. Um, the founder is Lance Lambert. He was a, a housing analyst at, um, uh, I believe it was Realtor.com and um, some other um, uh, companies as well. In any case, fantastic website. Uh, what we're looking right here is inventory levels, uh, looking at pre-COVID levels compared to now. And this is based on, I think, on a premium membership. Um, so they have a free membership and also a premium one as well. Anyways, I want to show this because, you know, real estate is local. Texas, they have 2% more house for sale. But again, Florida, only down by 5%. Uh, Arizona is very close as well, as well as uh, Idaho as well. In contrast, look at um, California. You know, of course, I live and work as a real estate agent in the greater Sacramento area. Uh, we have approximately 39% fewer houses for sale compared to May of 2019, much different compared to Texas and Arizona, for example. Also, much of the Midwest and also the Northeast has, you know, they're not even close. They have, you know, a, a very, very low level of uh, housing inventory uh, compared to what was this five years ago. Uh, Maine down by 60%, for example. Other states that are also coming uh, close behind as well is uh, Tennessee uh, down by 10%. Then we have uh, Washington State uh, down by 8%. Let's get back to my analysis though. Um, so hope you guys uh, got some value out of that. Anyways, number three, 78% of homeowners uh, who have a mortgage on their house um, are locked into an interest rate uh, below 5%. That's based on data from Freddie Mac. Uh, that, of course, has been limiting the amount of people who are deciding to list their house for sale, uh, which, of course, is keeping inventory levels you know, well below 2019's levels on a national level. Every market's different. Uh, new listings are higher compared to last year, but we're only seeing single-digit increases uh, for about one month. Let's watch the rate of increases of inventory levels in the coming months. And number four, the share price drops is at least a five-year high during the same time frame, it has been rising also faster compared to uh, last year as well. Uh, again, uh, price drops tends to peak in the winter months. And here we are in early June, 
and we're still at you know relatively high levels though. Number five, last week, houses on average took two days longer to sell. Uh, that's a lag indication though, based on a closed home sale. But wait, there's more. <laughs> so number one, average 30-year fixed rates uh, for mortgages are below uh, uh, October's 2023 peak at 8%. Uh, daily rates as of Thursday are around 7% for people with great credit on average. Uh, of course, you know, one percentage point less than the 8% rates we saw in October of last year. But of course, housing inventory is still a big, big issue because even though rates have come down from the 8% we saw in October, home prices have increased greatly ever since then. That's one of the main reasons why we have a lack of housing affordability in the U.S. right now. Number two, the housing market has been very volatile for years, uh, making it fun, but also challenging to report on. Uh, and this year is no exception. The most recent stats that we have uh, regarding mortgage purchase applications from the MBA for the week ended June 7th show that application numbers decreased by 12% year over year. Also, the National Association of Realtors, or NAR, reported that pending home sales for existing houses in April fell by 7% year over year. They reported that about, what, two weeks ago? I'll have an update for you guys in about two weeks from today, actually. On top of that, their index based on pending home sales of existing houses uh, decreased to a record low, excluding April of 2020, 2020 which is basically uh, when we had COVID lockdowns across the United States. So in other words, uh, their index regarding pendings is basically at a 23-year low, the lowest level since at least 2001. I mean, can you see a lack of transactions occurring on national level right now? And already we have you know fewer house for sale or fewer home sales this year compared to the same time frame last year. And last year was the lowest level of home sales since 1995. To put it in context, guys, crazy. Anyways, uh, to compare the uh, resale market of existing houses to brand new home construction, the U.S. Census Bureau defines a new home sale as a deposit taken or a sales agreement signed between a home builder and a home buyer. So that's really acting more like a pending sale than a close home sale. So in any case, looking at the uh, new home construction sales, that decreased by 8% in April compared to April of 2023. So all these incentives that builders are offering a closing cost credit, uh, a free refrigerator, for example, uh, and also a lower mortgage rate uh, did not help increase sales this April on a national level. New home sales for May will, will be reported by the U.S. Census Bureau uh, on June 26. Of course, I'll make a video regarding that once we have some updated numbers on that. It appears the market is highly rate dependent. So, of course, the data coming in is ever changing. Number three. Looking forward for the nation as a whole, asking prices were flat, inventories up significantly from one year ago, and houses are taking longer to sell. We're also seeing a sharp rise of price drops as well. All these metrics are pointing to a softening housing market, but again, it could be a lot worse. Imagine a scenario again in which new listings were rising by 30 to 50 percent. That'd be, you know, I would be ringing the bell, causing, um, uh, saying that we're going to see a big correction. So right now, we're not seeing new listings skyrocketing, but keep in mind, we also could see a huge pullback in home buying demand. If sales absolutely tanked, if they plummeted, that would cause inventory to rise because we're seeing fewer sales. So we do not need to see a rise of new listings up greatly, nor see home prices decrease. That's exactly what we saw in 2022, where new listings were not skyrocketing, but home buying demand you know, basically fall off a cliff that's why home prices decrease. Also, number four, the most important one, if you guys are still watching today's video, I appreciate you guys so much. Um, so yeah, please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Um, I appreciate you guys watching, watching today's video. Uh, also, please comment below with your biggest takeaways from today's video as well. Um, it's really fun to make these videos. Of course, it's a lot of work, but I absolutely love doing it. Um, and yeah, hope you guys got a lot of value in today's video. I appreciate you guys so much. Have an amazing day and I'll see you next video.